Scrap and Abby, and I have another really fun haul from Red Cottage on Etsy, which is owned and operated by Michelle. And this is probably my fourth, fifth, I can't remember now, because I've been bu buying so many of her different books. She has, hands down, the best vintage book, um, you know, uh, ephemera, meaning like, you know, old co postcards and letters and old-timey receipts and marbled paper and just just so many so many gorgeous things in her shop and I'm really excited to do this other video this these are some items that I recently purchased um, and then I also grabbed some prints and stuff too so just to kind of real quickly or t tell you real quickly what I do with these different books and things some of the books I will you know use the pages out of it to make different kinds of crafts um, the whole gamut of you know like junk journal books and um, traveler's notebooks and this all that kind of stuff and then some of the books I will actually t gut it out keep the papers for another project or other projects and then I will build a book from the base of the book meaning I will build all the signatures pages dividers all that kind of stuff and then there are some books that I order that I don't touch at all I keep them because they're beautiful they um, have a special meaning to me or they're from a special era or something like that so I don't you, you know I, I've tried to be very respectful to the books I know they don't have feelings not people but um I just want to respect the materials and everything that went into these because she has amazing vintage um, uh, books and different things I've also held some different um, vintage uh, postcards and um, quite a few maps I get them for the states that I went from Oregon because I'm from Oregon. We now live in Florida, so I have one from Florida. And these are like 100-year-old maps or something. They're really, really cool. And then I have a, um, you know, some other maps of other states that mean something to me or maybe for a friend or something like that. So just to kind of explain what I do with those. And I promise you, I really am working on junk journals. I just have to, um, you know, I'm working on multiple things at one time. So you will see me using these in prior haul books for sure in some upcoming projects. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of dig in. So this is my, these are my botanical prints. I do want to also give a nod to uh, Michelle. These were in a huge box, which I can't, it won't fit on my craft table. She does this every time I get an order. It doesn't matter if it's five books, if it's 40 books, whatever. She individually wraps and uses the cutest washi tape so everything comes protected. I mean, if it's like prints or maps or receipts or things like that, she always makes sure that they're in a really good um, you know, packaging so they don't get damaged. She writes fragile on the box just so that they handle it more carefully and everything. So I just want to give her a huge shout out for that because I completely appreciate that. All right, so here are some different botanical prints that I um, ordered from her. This was one set or one lot, whatever you want to say. I'll pull these out. And this might be a little bit longer um, haul video because I have you know, these are older books and vintage items and things, and I really want to share them with you. And these are also the first time I'm looking at these items since I got them in my hands. So this is beautiful. So this is like a perfect example of what I would use for different themed um, junk journal books. I give most of my projects a name of some sort. Um, and so I really, really want to be working on some um, really cool kind of vintage um, botanical junk journal, meaning, you know, that having lots of space to put in notes and, you know, photos and tags and all kinds of really cool stuff. So I'm very excited to have these. And look how beautiful those images are. Now, Michelle also does this. Make sure I have my information showing. That she will always send a, um, she always sends, sorry, I'm trying to cover up my address. She always sends um, a printed, um, in, list of what it is you purchase which has the pricing and it's also in color which I totally appreciate and what I do as I keep all of these and um, every time I get an order from her and I put them with those certain books so whenever I'm pulling them out to work on them I can give the correct information about where it's from, where it's from how old it is things like that so for these botanical prints these were from Let's see, it just says Vintage Botanical Illustrations, so there's no actual date on these. And that happens sometimes. You know, you, she doesn't get the book or the whole component, you know, to know what um, air it's from. So, or ear, I should say. Just gorgeous. I mean, the illustrations, I these are so beautiful. It says 1911. I don't know if that means when it was first drawn. I, I don't know. I don't want to say this is from 1911 because I don't know that. 
So very, very beautiful. And look at that gorgeous one. Love it. And she's very careful when she does take pages out of books and, and parts them up or if, when she does that. You can see here, they're really nice, clean edges. So look at that beautiful illustration on the back side. Here we have some gorgeous, an orangey plant. I can't pronounce the names of some of these. Mimilus cardinalis. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but there you go. And then this is beautiful. There's that, that's what that one's called. I'll just show it to you so you can look at it yourself. Because I, I don't want to slaughter these um, the names of these plants that I cannot pronounce. So, Or different um, botanical pieces, I should say. Look at that name. Marigold. Now look at that. Why? That is so funny. It's almost like medical terminology. I, I used to be a nurse. And we would have the longest words for like the shortest type of thing or whatever. It's just like it just cracks me. Like, so for example... Um, if a female is going to go and have her, um, like, let me, let me just tell you the medical word. So, bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. You know what that means? That means taking out both of your ovaries. Th they have these super long words, and that just reminds me of that. So, sorry I kind of segued there. <laughs> and, ooh, that's a really beautiful. Look at that deep, nice red color. The red, that's very beautiful. Here's some pink. Oops, I don't want to, feels like it's stuck to get a little bit. Let me just kind of carefully get that apart there we go look at that pink one this is really cool very very nice illustrations for sure there's another beautiful pink one and here's a little bit of purple which is my color as you all know oh I forgot to show you the bottom sorry there's the back side and a nice white and green I when I saw these when I was um, you know, shopping on her web or Etsy shop, I was already um, formulating in my mind what the junk journal would look like using these illustrations um, and um, or these prints. And I'm that that's just kind of how my brain works. And so it's very exciting to have these in my hand, and um, you know, kind of kind of having them here so I can go ahead and start working on these different books that I have in my head. I want to put these back in here. Pardon the crinkle. I just want to keep them protected until I get them put away all nice and safe. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind to tear into these. I used to try to salvage the, you know, the tissue wrap, but I don't want to make this, these videos too super long. I'm not trying to do it on purpose or anything. So I'm just going to put those off to the side. So this one here, I'm going to look at my sheet. So this is um, alternating current electricity. So let me see when that one was. Okay, this one is from 1914. It's alternating current electricity and its applications to industry. So this is, again, from 1914. And I'll hold this up so you can see the, you can see the um, title there. It's been embossed in there. And this, the spine, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, just look at the pages, how they're so worn. I, I just love this stuff. I, I, I really, really do. And it's so awesome when you find these books that have, you know, notes and things scratched on them. And then, you know, like this person has their address on there in case the book was found or something. I'm not sure. But this is just beautiful. I, I mean, this to me is beautiful. I Maybe not to others, but to me it is. I just love it. So I won't flip through the entire book because we'd be here for a super long time. And there's some notes on the back as well. But I'll just kind of do like a quick flip through here so you can kind of see all the different, like the different graphings. And, you know, I love it when you have like all these numbers and here are some, you know, problems. And um, let's see, I just passed the something I wanted to point out. Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? There it is. I love it when you have these kind of tables in your, um, in these books that I use for junk journaling too. It's just awesome. You can, you know, the, tear the whole page out you can cut this down to where it's just this make it into a tag or you know pockets it's just so many so many options i just love that so just kind of do a quick flip through you can see all the different illustrations that are in this book i should come down a little bit further so you can see kind of get the center there we go just really exciting i'm I actually kind of, I don't read all these books that I have word for word because, you know, it would probably take forever because I have quite a bit, but I do um, pull some of these out, and when I'm looking for some inspiration and things like that, I will kind of, you know, poke around and read some of these, and this is always a bonus to me, always a bonus when you get these pullouts in these books. I just love it. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. 
look at how cool this is. I am so excited for this. Oh, I love it. It's just so awesome. And I'm, I'm thrilled that it's still intact. And this is a really good look of a book from, you know, being from 1941. So there's that one. Put that one off to the side over here. I'm trying to get my little cheat sheet close so I can keep track. All right, let's go ahead and work on this one. And some of these, um, she does sell a lot of vintage book covers where they don't have the actual innards of the book. Um, which is fine with me because then it just uh, makes that much easier for me when I go to make my own junk journals. Now this is, I think this is the one where she had messaged me because she and I, we chat, chat back and forth quite a bit. She knows that I'm obsessed with purple. Everybody who knows me knows I'm obsessed with purple. All shades, I love it. And she has come across some old vintage books that have some purple tones to them. And sometimes she can't find this, you know, they're not that they're rare, rare, but they are slightly rare because she had told me that, you know, purple was really meant for royalty, which I knew because I love purple, but she's the one that is the book smart knowledge one, not me. I, I just know what, I just love to look at them. And um, so th I think this is the one that she had first sent to me, and I was like, oh yeah, I'd love to have that reserve it for me. And then, um, oops, and uh, she, and, uh, so from one, one book cover that was purple, all this other stuff came about, because I, I just can't help it. Her shop is just, it really is one of my favorites. I don't know if my light's picking up that this is a nice purple, but it is, it is late here too, so. And let me look at the, okay, so sometimes the covers will have like the, um, the front, I forget what the technical name is for these first pages like that, but um, look at this, it's so cool. So sometimes I'll get some pages from the from the books, but mostly it's going to be old. And look inside here, so whoever made this book, they used some other book pages to make the spine. It's just so cool. Let me see if I can find what year that one is from. So this is an 1865 antique book cover. 1865 it just oh my gosh it's just so cool to me to hold this kind of stuff i i just i totally love it love it so so all the different books that i find from her shop that are purple hues and tones like that those are for 100 percent for me because i'm such a purple freak because i will turn these into little journals for myself little um, mini scrapbook albums or junk journals whatever that type of thing because i just love this um i i'm just so obsessed with purple now I do um, um, ha do a lot of commission work, so if anybody would be interested in having me make them a junk journal or anything along those lines, anything paper craft, to be honest with you, just send me a message um, or you can send me an email at scrapandabby at gmail.com because if somebody approached me and said, hey, I love purple, can you make me blah, absolutely I would look for and use a purple book. I've already, I've had several commissioned purple projects before, so... I just wanted to, don't th think if you love purple that you can't ask me to make you something like that because I totally would. So this one is, let's see, it's on page two. This is, um, it just says Vintage Book Covers 1930. So this is a little engine that could. Now this one does not have the innards inside and the reason I grabbed this one because um, with no innards is because I want to turn this into this and a few others I have into some little um, scrapbooks, you know, for our new grandbaby, Kyron. He's a little, little for two weeks or two months old, and I want to kind of create some different, you know, kind of like brag books or things like that, and then use these really cool old covers um, as the, you know, the place for all the different pictures and different things like that. I hope that makes sense. So instead of getting like a traditional scrapbook albums and things, I wanted to use these old vintage kid book covers. I thought that'd be kind of cool, so. And that's really nice, so I like that one. Nice, vibrant colors. Absolutely. Even though I ordered all these items and I know what they look like, it's still just very exciting for me to open these up. I'm just like, ooh, just to have them in my hands. So on the front I can see it says August 8th, 1964, but let's see what the paperwork says here. 1961 is this one. So this is the My Little Red Storybook. I just love it. Look at the, the illustrations on the front there. Those kids, it looks like so happy. Very, very cool. And then My Little Red Storybook. The Basic Readers. Okay, so it's like a basic school reader then. And I mean, just look at the imagery in here. It's just, oh my gosh. 
It's just so, so cool. I love it. I'll probably throw through all these because I do want to look at these illustrations. These are just so cool to look at this. You know, you could take these out of the of the book that it you know, it um, it came in, and you could you know trim down you know when you use these illustrations in something smaller. You could use them on the background of a canvas, a card, a scrapbook page, tags. I mean, it's just the possibilities are endless. You don't always have to keep them in the book form if that's not really your thing. If you you aren't into making junk journals and things like that. Just trying to give other ideas. I love how that's, the staples are kind of rusting in the center. I, I love that. Just trying to throw out some other ideas so people won't be, um, you know, maybe not intimidated. It's not the word I'm looking for. But maybe thinking, gosh, I can never use or buy old books because I don't want to make junk journal books or albums or journals or whatever. You can use these, you know, on any kind of a project you want to. I mean, it's just paper, you know. So you can just do that. Now some of these books, if, I, if I'm undecided on whether I want to tear, you know, tear them apart, you know, nicely and use them for further, you know, junk journals, whatever, I will hold on to them until I'm absolutely sure what I want to do because once I take a book apart, I mean, it's not going to go back the same way or whatever, if that makes any sense. Work on this pile over here. I just really appreciate her attention to shipping. This cover is so gorgeous, so gorgeous. I mean, look at that. You can see the beautiful purple flowers, and there's like this little viney bit here, and like a little trellis. It's so pretty. Making over Martha. So let me see what year this one is from off the paperwork. But let me show you the spine, and there's the back cover. It's like this linen cover, which I love that. And then I do get a few pages inside the book. And then charming books for girls. So I'm not sure what these are all about, but here's some extra ephemera. I'm, in my opinion, is that an illustration on the back? No, this paper felt like it was like that illustration paper you use. So this one is from uh, oh, this is oh here we go, 1915 antique book cover. So these are from 1915, or this book is I should say, the cover. So this is one of the one that I would uh, use to build upon and make a junk journal, um, art journal, something like that. So very, very pretty. I love that. I know some people aren't into the old vintage books and things of that nature, and that's totally fine. Um, I'm just such a lover of all things vintage. I love class classic movies. That's mostly what I watch. Um, Except in, the, except in the evening when I watch Murder, She Wrote. Because I love Murder, She Wrote. I love Golden Girls too, but, Gold, but Murder, She Wrote is probably my favorite. So this is Bellow's French Dictionary. I love, love it when she has um, items and books from different countries. It's just so cool. I do not know how to speak French, but it doesn't matter for me. Because, well actually this one has English and French. Maybe I could learn myself a little bit of French. I don't know. But it's just kind of cool because I just like seeing the different words. And I love the dictionaries and things like that. And the different you know, illustrative books and stuff like mechanical type stuff because you get the coolest illustrations in those. So this one is from 1935, so very, very cool. Now let's do kind of a quick flip through. Oh, back here is where you can write some notes and stuff, so that's pretty neat on the back side. So let's kind of do a quick flip through because last time, on my last order from her, I had purchased, it was a French dictionary. It was 100% in French. But this was really cool because it gives you the English version of the French word, which is awesome. So very, very nice, thick book with all that beautiful dictionary stuff in there. Okay. And that was only $8 for that book. That is like super, super cheap. Okay, so let's look at this one. This one has another nice linen cover that I liked. So this is a field guide to the birds. I'm really, really into the different, you know, outdoor, like botanical, and I just, I love wildlife, all that. Those make really, really cool books, I think, or journals. So this is from 1960 Bird Field Guide. 
I'll show you that there. And look at the inside of that. Isn't that just awesome? This reminds me of the birds when I look at this, <laughs> the Alfred Hitchcock movie. And on the back, it's got a ruler on the back. I'm not sure what you would do with that measuring birds. I, I don't know, but that's really cool. I've never seen that before. If anybody watching knows exactly what this would be for, please comment below and let me know because I would love to know. Inquiring minds want to know. I mean, I know it's for measuring something. I just don't know what. So I, I, I don't think they, like, capture the birds, right, when you bird watch? I don't know. I've never done that before, so I don't know. All right, so here's a little bit of writing on the back. Um, can't read it. To me, it's ineligible because some, some script I can't read. I can't tell what it says. But I'll just do kind of like a quick flip through here, and we'll see the different illustrations. And... Like this one. Look at this. This is a color illustration. That is so beautiful. This looks like a, um, this, this screams to me kind of like a Tim Holtzy type of a vibe. And, um, when I make these different journals, you'll see what I'm talking about when I say that. It's just, it's hard to explain. But look at these beautiful full color illustrations. And there's so many in here. So many. And just the different, you know, definitions and information about the various birds. Just so cool. Look at the owls. This is beautiful. Look at those gorgeous owls. Very, very pretty. There's, oh, there's some more long ones right there. Very, very, very exciting. Very happy for this. And here's some black and white, which is nice to kind of mix, mix in a little bit of black and white with the color. All right, so there is that one. This was the bird field guide. And that, um, let's see. And that was $8, too. If you, and ladies and gents, want me to tell you the prices of the books and things when I do these kind of hauls, comment below and let me know, and I will do that, um, and, or try to remember to do that, because I know sometimes I, when I'm watching, I like to kind of know the prices. These are like one-of-a-kind type of a thing, so, um, you know, the odds of you finding this from her shop anyway, unless, you know, would probably be rare, but if you wanted to look for it or something online, you know, that's, and you kind of want to compare pricing, that's, I'm totally fine with that. So this is a really cool book. This is Rabbit Heel by Robert Lawson. I got this for a very specific project, which I cannot talk about yet, because, um, I'm still working on it. So let me see. 1956 is this Rabbit Hill book. Now, I cannot explain how this feels. It almost feels like, um, like deli paper or something. It's really nice and soft. It's, see, what does this say? It's got the John Newberry Medal for the most, or see, for the most distinguished contribution to American literature, literature for children. Very cool. I like that little gold seal on there. And there's the back cover there. We'll just kind of do a quick flip through. Wow, look at that. Look at that illustration on this book. This is so cool. So cool. The Hill. I think I'm actually probably going to take the time to read this book. It's, it's, I know it's a children's book, but that's okay. Um, I just think it's really neat. So, this looks very, it's, the, 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 um, different imagery and the, all the illustrations are very intriguing to me. So I was kind of, kind of do a quick flip through here. You got some different pictures of rabbits. And there's a looks like a little mouse. That rabbit's got a pipe in his mouth. Just really cool. So, yeah. Very excited to um, use that for a specific project. Okay, let me work on this. And I saved this packet of this tissue paper and I will use it for packaging. It's all ripped and stuff, but I crumple it up and stick it around things. So. Not to, I'm not sure I told you that because you probably don't care. <laughs> so anyway, so this one is the Nature Library of Insects. This one, I was really happy to find this one. And this has that kind of linen cover as well. So the insect book is from 1905. It says, Instincts, Instincts, Insects, 1905 Worn Book. So... This was $13. This is a really nice, heavy book. So to me, that's a really good price point um, for this. Look at the, I love that little fiber that they use to the binding. Okay, so I'm not going to flip this whole book because this is a larger book too. But I just kind of want to show you some things. Now, I am terrified, terrified of spiders. I mean, it's, it's not a joke. I am very 
very afraid of spiders. So I am kind of, I kind of was like, mm, do I want to get this book because I'm sure there's probably going to be images and, you know, some um, information about spiders. And I'm like, I don't know what if I can do it. But I love how all of this looks. So I will just brave through that. Ooh, this paper. Look at, listen to that. You can almost see my fingers that. This is really cool. I like the texture of that. So anyway, just got some really, really cool stuff in here when I was looking through the photos that she had on the website or in her shop for listings. Let me kind of go this way. Looks like the illustrations are on the left. Left and right. So here's like some different bee or little of these mosquitoes. Oh, wasps. So, And I won't show a lot of stuff up close because maybe the there's others out here who don't like looking at insects either. I don't want to freak anybody out, but I got this because this really will be kind of a cool, um, kind of outdoor, kind of a um, junk journal is what I have in mind for this, which is why I wanted to get it. So there's that one. Um, oh, here's another nice, really thin piece of paper. I'm just going to kind of do like a quick uh, flip through. Now, I don't know if spiders are considered um, insects. I have no idea. I don't want to know. But I have seen spider things in insects books before. So that's why I was just assuming they would be in here. I don't know if they would be or not. So anyway, so that's kind of that really cool page. Oops, there is. Oh, I just saw one. Yuck, yuck, yuck. So anyway, <laughs> I'm really going to freak myself out with this book. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have got it, but it's just so cool looking. I just, you know, anyway, I'll spare you all you guys out there because maybe you're freaked out with this stuff too. So I'll have to have my husband go through the book for me and get all the spider stuff out. <laughs> okay, so let me see what else I have left here. I did that one, that one, that one. Oh, okay, I have a 1968 World Atlas. Oh, it must be, okay, that one's down here, I think. And then... Yeah, that's it. Then I just have to do the, the atlas. So I just noticed on here, this looks like it got a little bit smashed. Not smashed in the box, but like the you know the tissue paper kind of rips on this little stack of books. I'm going to just read here what this says real quick. Okay, so she wrote, extras for, oh, extras for grandma. Congratulations on the new grandbaby love Michelle that was so sweet oh Michelle, I don't know if she watches my videos or not because I know she's a really busy lady but if you are thank you so much that is so very sweet of you so um you know cause like I said we chat back and forth and stuff and you know she will look out for certain things for you if you contact her on her Etsy shop and say hey you ever find things like this or whatever you know so she was kind of on the lookout uh, for a lot of really cool kid books for me because I, I want to make them like I've already said to you, kind of like photo albums, things like that. So she sent me this stack of, as an extra. That was so sweet of her. So here's the cover, A Penny for Candy. And since, you know, we have a grand a grandson, she's been, you know, kind of keeping her eyes out for me. Look at that illustration. That candy looks good. She keeps her eyes out for me on more of that boy, you know, type stuff. Not that the girls can't like this too. But anyway, so Fire Dog. That is so cool. Very cool. And look at the back. I just love that see bounce the jeep that's really cute oh look at that really nice blue color that's really cool and then you got some illustrations some black and white and some are in full color very cool and dipsy donkey and this is a cover with some um pages i guess actually looks like looks like this is a full book yeah it looks like it's the whole bit there so very cool kind of just some farm animals and things like that. This one, Doings of Little Bear. My husband would love this because he's an outdoorsman and, you know, that's really cool. That all, all the different animals on there. So, Doings of Little Bear. So, I've never heard of any of these books before. I guess I sh shouldn't be surprised. It's not like I've heard of every children's book in the world, but, you know, these are really, really cool. And then Twilight Tales. Oh, I love this. Look at those cute little animals in there. So adorable. It's kind of fun seeing the little scribbles of the kids who have this book. Look at how beautiful these are. Just gorgeous. Just beautiful. Oh, Michelle, thank you so much. That was so nice of you. This, these really mean a lot to me, and I'm very excited to um, work on them. So this is the 19, or excuse me, 
1968 World Atlas is this one here. And this is the last one. So thanks for sticking with me for almost half an hour. <laughs> All right. And I love getting these kind of books in my inventory, so to speak, or do we want to call it, that are maps and atlases. It's just, I love having a variety of all these old, really cool things. So this is a really heavy book. And this was only 10 bucks for this book. $10. I've seen this kind of stuff, not this particular book, but I've seen this kind of thing like Goodwill and stuff, and they want like, I don't know, 20 bucks or something. It's just crazy. I, I like to get the deal and stuff too, too, but I also appreciate the fact that it's old and rare and all that good stuff. But she just has really good pricing. And I get nothing, let me clarify, I get nothing from her but by me doing these videos and talking so highly of her shop. I get, get I don't get anything. That, those, that stack of books I had to share with you, that's because I've made, you know, probably five or six purchases with her and you know, I kind of chat back and forth about what kind of books I'm looking for. So I don't, I, I'm not sponsored by her. This is all, you know, just because I love to share with all of you out there when I come across awesome websites and shops and things like that. So just to, um, just, just to put that out there. Oh, look at that. This is so cool. Solar system chart. It's got all the, the saga of space exploration, it says. I'm trying to get this in frame, but it's pretty good size book so very cool let's get to this here oh look at that that's very neat I would have loved this kind of thing when I was a kid I like looking at maps and um, and that kind of thing probably because that's just what I think what I'm used to remember our memory memories of when I was a kid when we go on family road trips and my mom would pull out the Rand McNally map out of the glove box as my dad was driving and we're, we're all in the back, you know, the, of the vehicle and stuff as kids and just, you know, are we there yet, Mom? So it's just kind of a memory for me, I guess, is why I kind of like it. So there's a map of, um, of Asia and North America, South America, Australia. So just really, really cool book. There's some awesome illustrations in here. Um, there's color, which is really nice, colored pages. And then just kind of, you know, some photos of people from the different regions of the world. And, um, wow, look at this. Oops, I just passed that one. Hey, look at this one. So this is really cool. I'm kind of looking through this, and they have, like, broken down by transportation. And I didn't realize it was all this extra stuff in there. I thought it was, like, a straight um, of an atlas. This is awesome. Very cool. And just look at all these beautifully colored maps that are in here. Oh, this makes me so happy. Just flipping through here. And just, like, this kind of, you know information like the different glossaries and like this has some different facts and in this information so this is really really cool wow this is a huge index of all the different places in the world this is crazy I tell you the world we live in is such a beautiful place and a big place too but luckily the internet has made it kind of a little bit smaller because let me I can be sharing this kind of stuff with people who live outside of the US so there's Washington, Oregon. Oh, I'm so glad that I have just a, um, oops, about knocked my phone over. I'm glad that there's one in Oregon in here. I assume there would be, but anyway, just forget I asked. I said that. <laughs> so this is my home state right here. This is where I was born and raised and lived up until one year ago, a little over a year ago, when we moved to Florida. So I'm going to show you where I lived here. I'm going to find it. So there's Carvallis, Oregon. I'm going to zoom just a little bit more. Trying to keep track of where I can. Uh, let's see. Trying to get real close. There we go. So right here, Lebanon is where I was born and raised and lived. Um, Corvallis is not that far away. Um, a lot of people have never heard of Lebanon or even Albany. Lebanon's about 15, 14,000 people. Corvallis um, is home to Oregon State University, the Beavers. So a lot of people know that. Um, town just because of the state college and or because of the college there one one of two the other one is in Eugene and University of Oregon they're the ducks so just to kind of point out where I with um, was from or I am from so very very cool and now we live in Central Florida so I love that definitely gonna be using this for a some type of home decor piece for me like maybe I'll frame it or something really cool like that or as a background for some photos and such so yeah, this is exciting. 
very very happy so thanks so much for letting me kind of you know geek out a little bit on these old, old books and old ephemera, oops, um, ephemera and different things like that that I just really love and enjoy it's just a lot of fun for me to purchase these items and then mostly just to share with you all of you out there that there are some really great resources for purchasing old books and ephemera and all that kind of stuff now, now uh, I'm sure there are other fantastic sellers on Etsy. I'm not trying to say that there isn't, but she her, her shop is, a, is the first one I stumbled across, I think like last October or something, and I just fell in love. She just has such a wide variety. So part of me wants to tell you, but part of me doesn't because I don't want you all to go snatch all the good books up, but they're all, she has a huge, huge inventory. I mean, I'm just teasing when I say that. So if you're looking for all in any of this type of thing that I've shared with you um, not in this haul but I've had like I said I've had postcards old perfume labels um, uh, let's see ty old typing paper and the vintage like you know really see-through type of papers and just receipts from you know 1800s and stuff she just has a ton a ton of things in there and um, so I'll put a link to her shop in the descri description box below so you can click on it and kind of check it out for yourself and then search around on Etsy for other sellers of this kind of thing too. So I just like to pass it on to all of you out there in case you also like me love this kind of stuff and want to use it when you're crafting whether you just want to stick it in your library whatever it is you want to do so I just like to pass it on so keep your eyes peeled for some really cool junk journals and different projects I'm working on using some of these books and books I've hauled before. So I will see you next time. Happy scrapping, happy planning, and happy crafting. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.